Oh, great buzz. What specialization do I choose? You must choose for yourself. My time to get started, though, and I am already on the wait list for like five different classes, and I don't know if- Silence, you foolish mortal. I shall send a messenger in my stead. Listen to his advice. As you wish, buzz. All right, what's up, guys? Let's talk about Georgia Tech's specializations. So basically, there are five. Robotics, computer systems, human-computer interaction, interactive intelligence, machine learning. So today, we're going to go over all of them, and I'm going to rank them slash help you understand what you're getting into when you decide on one based on three criteria. First of all, how soon do you want to be done with the program? Second of all, what do you want to learn? And third of all, what is your willingness in terms of taking graduate algorithms? Are you willing to take it? Are you uh, willing to try it out? Or are you just trying to avoid it altogether and get done with the program? And real quick, guys, I am now offering one-on-one -on -one help with things like writing your resume, preparing you for that next job interview you got coming up, answering your questions about the OMSES, and even helping with your homework. Because honestly, this is a tough program. You don't need to do it alone, and I would love to help you out. So please go to the link in the description below to sign up today. Thank you so much. All right, so first of all, I'm going to roughly group together these three specializations, robotics, interactive intelligence, and machine learning. The reason I do this is because they have a lot of overlap in the classes that you can take to fulfill those specializations. And then off to the side, I'm just gonna put computing systems and HCI because they don't have as many classes in common with these other ones. So this is a nice trick because while you're deciding for classes, basically if you figure out what classes are common across interactive intelligence, machine learning, and robotics, you can start with those classes first because then if you end up changing your mind later, you'll still be able to apply that credit towards a different specialization. So here, let me just walk you through what I'm talking about. For example, this is robotics and they require AI, right, as part of their specialization. This is interactive intelligence. They also optionally require AI as one of the required classes. And then this is machine learning, which doesn't require AI. Okay, so basically, if you're kind of on the fence between interactive intelligence and robotics, what you could do is you could take AI, let's put it right there, and that would fulfill both specializations. So this is kind of the trick you're going to want to do throughout your program because this helps you a ton in saving time. So let's look at machine learning, for example. Machine learning, that would fall under robotics. This would also fall under... Uh, let's see, there we go, it falls under interactive intelligence as well as machine learning. So the machine learning class, that's a solid class that you should take if you're kind of on the fence of these three uh, specializations. And if you pass, great, you are opening up the doors to your specialization opportunities and you can switch your specialization at any time in the program. It's actually, it's not a big deal. It's super easy. You just go to this form online and you fill it out and like within a day, your specialization has changed. So it's not a big deal. Okay, so let's go back then to robotics. Okay, so I'm just gonna walk you through the classes that I've taken for each of these specializations and my two cents about each one real quick. So. Graduate algorithms. For robotics, you must take graduate algorithms. And this class is hard. At the time I took it, I didn't really like it. It was a lot of pseudocode and not much programming, which I didn't like, and was like really harshly graded. However, recently I've heard that they have introduced more programming into the course. So take it with a grain of salt. I don't know if it's that good anymore or whatever. It is notoriously difficult. Um, it may set you back a semester. It did for me. I was first going to do machine learning as my specialization, but then I withdrew from grad algos after doing really poorly in it and switched to interactive intelligence. So that set me back a semester. However, they refund you some tuition. So it's, it's kind of like you can try it out. You may pass the class. And if you do, that's great because then you can basically choose any of these specializations, these three, because as well as computing systems, here let me put that over there. You do need it for computing systems. And I'll put over here, interactive intelligence does not require, let me write that out, does not require algos. 
Okay, so interactive intelligence does not require you to take algorithms. If we look at the spec, um, it is optional there. You can take it or you can take software development process. So that's one way to get around this. And I'm also curious, does human computer interaction require it? Let's see. It does not. Okay, so this one's new, er, it's human computer interaction. You also do not need to take graduate algorithm. So that's another option for you if you're really trying to avoid that class. Yeah, so grad algos, it's a tough class. Uh, it's a hot topic, I suppose. You can drop down in the comments what you think about it if you've taken it, help other people decide. And then let's talk about AI. So AI is honestly a great class. It's tough, it's programming heavy, and uh, you're gonna need to know Python, NumPy, Matplotlib, like, uh, what's that called? matrix multiplication and stuff like that. It's pretty intense. Uh, you do, however, get really good at programming if you are able to pass the class. And then, like we mentioned before, AI would help you in either robotics or interactive intelligence. Machine learning, that one's a really good class. It's like more of a survey course. If you look here, it fits into a lot of different specializations. And um, it's a good class. Like You don't need to know a ton of machine learning going into it. You just kind of need to be willing to start exploring machine learning and understanding different algorithms like you go over the algorithms in class you talk about them you are supposed to write reports about them your exams are not too difficult they're definitely not coding at all it's mostly just like free response questions and then for me like the 40 percent in that class got me a b so i totally bombed it i thought i was going to have to change my specialization story of my life at the omscs but it ended up being that I passed the class with a 40%. So definitely it's a tough class, but don't worry too much if your grades are low. Okay, and then over here, for this is for robotics. So if we go down, um, these are the classes that, okay, I've taken AI for robotics. That was a really good class, and it's a good beginner class for the OMSES. I would recommend taking it by itself or paired up with machine learning for trading because um, those two classes both use a lot of Python and in the same way, kind of. So you'll kind of just use the same code from one or the other. And then I don't believe that robotics fits into any of the other specializations, but let's double check that. Okay, so if you take robotics, that's basically gonna just squarely fit into the robotics specialization. So let's just write that out. AI for robotics. And then that's basically all the classes that I've taken for this robotics specialization. They drop down in the comments below if you've taken one of these other ones, natural language, computer vision, computational photography. Let others know what you thought of the class because, yes, this will definitely save you time if you kind of understand what you're getting into before you start taking these classes. All right, so next up is interactive intelligence. So this is actually my specialization. You're looking at a proud graduate of interactive intelligence. So software development process, that's actually a pretty easy class. It's making an Android app with three other teammates, sometimes two, and it's honestly not too bad. Like you have to design it, you have to implement it, but it doesn't need to go like full on scale. You're not making a ton of different things. You're just kind of making the buttons do stuff. It's not like a super involved process. Um, and then artificial intelligence, we've already talked about knowledge-based AI. So this one's actually a perfect beginner course. I took this as my first course in the program and I thought it was a spot on because it starts out slow. You just get your feet wet in the program, understanding the process, how it all works. And then near the end, you actually do implement like a really cool program that's supposed to solve these things called Raven's progressive matrices. So basically you're given these pictures and you're trying to get the computer to understand how to decide the correct answer. And it's actually pretty cool. Like I thought that class was actually really fun. Uh, and yes, you do get your feet wet and you get a really good project under your belt at the end of the semester. Okay, so next up there is machine learning. We've already talked about that. In this interactive intelligence specialization, I've taken ethics, human computer interaction, and that's it. So ethics, that's totally a softball class. It's not that difficult. It kind of gets tedious, but it's not like you're uh, cramming for the exams and stuff like that. Human computer interaction, that one's a good class. It's kind of like you design the interface for a program of some kind. You don't really need to implement it. You do a ton of writing. So it's kind of, to my mind, like a lot of busy work. Um, but in my head, I was like, I just needed an easy class to get 
the program finished and so it's like one of those classes to me all right so that's interactive intelligence next up is machine learning okay so there's algos there's machine learning you must pass both of those and then ethics okay so i have taken reinforcement learning so that one's a toughie i took it over the summer which i do not recommend because it was a super short semester and you had to do a ton of homework in like three to four weeks so really don't recommend that i'm sure over like a you know spring or maybe the fall it's not too bad um, but it's also really cool like you get to do some cool stuff in that class like here's the project you do at the end it's called lunar lander basically you're getting this little spaceship to land itself after a few iterations and you implement this all like it's given to you the basic controls but then everything else is up to you and it's honestly really fun so reinforcement learning i would highly recommend and then i would put this into a category of like cool to learn so let's just write that out real quick like let me just make a box it's like cool to learn reinforcement learning that one is definitely a cool class to take and then reinforcement learning will basically just fit into the machine learning specialization all right and then uh, i forgot sorry ethics ethics fits into a few so like if we look at this i believe it fits into the interactive intelligence yes it does fits into machine learning uh will it fit into these other ones no it does not so basically ethics will fit into interactive intelligence and machine learning so let's plop that in there okay and then machine learning okay so yes you got your ethics you got your reinforcement learning machine learning for trading so this one's a great class i thought because yes you use python you do some stock programming and it's kind of fun the lectures are really well made i would say and then the class is pretty well organized it's like an auto graded class which i prefer honestly just because i like the programming aspect more of these classes than the writing aspect um, so you basically just need your program to do something at the end of the day and uh it's it's a great class so then uh, let's move on to the computing systems specialization. This one's honestly a really good candidate, I would say, for specialization in my job at Microsoft. So I'm a Microsoft um, network engineer for Azure specifically. And this class, like these things you learn in these classes are super relevant for programming in the real world because you're having to debug operating systems. You're having to debug networks. You're having to make high performance systems and stuff like that. So this one's, I would say, is like super practical. Yes, AI is like all the rage, but there's also a need to just make things work, right? I mean, at the end of the day, if your computer weren't turned on, you can't run AI models on it. So this is an actually optimal uh, specialization in my mind. I will link above an interview I had with my coworker who did this exact specialization. He also works at Microsoft to give you his two cents. But um, let's take a look. So computer networks, of course, that's going to be my favorite because I work in networking. And uh, this was a great hands-on class. Like the experience you learn from this class is like super relevant to networking in the uh, software engineering world. You, what I do for work is basically what we learned here in computer networks. And it's honestly not too difficult. Um, you have like some quizzes, you have some labs, but it's never like having to cram or having to spend like eight hours a day on it. No, it's just like one or two hours a day, honestly. There you got software development process. Okay. Um, let's see, let's write that computer networks in real quick. Cool to learn, I'll say. Computer networks as well as for uh, systems. Okay, computer networks. And then uh, what else do we got in here? So you got some software analysis and testing. I didn't take those. Network science, that sounded pretty interesting to me. And I also read from the reviews, it was not too difficult. So this one's a bonus uh, if you can get past grad algos. So I would say it's cool to learn. It's super useful. Uh, the graduate algorithms will stand in your way. So best of luck with that. Not to say it's impossible, but just keep that in mind. Okay, and then finally, guys, human-computer interaction. So this one's brand new as of like 2023, 2024. Um, human-computer interaction is one of those required classes. I took that. Not too bad electives here so it seems like you got some more like health informatics like digital health uh there's some game ai it sounds kind of cool i've never taken any of those so i can't really say but potentially a good option if you do not want to take graduate algorithms all right guys thanks so much for watching hope you enjoyed it please feel free to leave a like subscribe for more of these kinds of videos and i'll see you in the next one